When you're talking to your friends about band logos, and the first question that obviously comes to mind is, well, who has the biggest logo? And if you don't answer, well, of course, obituary, well, then allow me to present my case. It started out pretty damn big. And sure, this argument's not going to keep following suit each subsequent release, because here we go, boom, cause of death, it already shrunk down. But that's not really where the, the root of the issue was. They See, they were still kind of getting into this bigness, so to speak. And then really, it's when they kind of vanished and then came back with Frozen in Time. Like, you're thinking, well, no, not at all. That's a pretty small logo. Well, that's when they started to figure things out. Like, you know, Frozen in Time, it's got a lot of space up there. We could have really made the logo bigger. Because the next release, eh, they didn't exactly follow suit. I'm really not holding a good case now, am I? But I'm pretty sure it's about there. Where Darkest Day, where it's so big that it's transparent. That way, no art could possibly get in the way. Now, of course, when you're like, all right, Wolf, well, when you're transparent, you, you got a square, so it only goes to end to end, maybe the top. You know, you need a rectangle to go cover all ends. So maybe, hey guys, maybe next release, if we're going to do a CD, maybe we need to do a long box CD. That way, you know, it can cover all the ends. Or, hmm, maybe uh, if we did an LP, we'd do a gatefold. It'd be the same kind of logic. If you can't go any bigger, well then you got to go home, right? Not exactly what happened, but pretty close. Because, you know, if you're going to go home, well then you're going to ink this band in your blood. Well, then they threw an, uh, a curveball, as they'd done previously from Cause of or, uh, Slowly Rerot. But then, that's when they really went home, because what do you do after that cleverness? Well, then you really go home with obituary, obituary. And that's where they left us. So the mystery remains, like, what are they going to do next? Is it going to be obituary too? Or are they going to throw us a curveball? Maybe they'll shrink the logo, it'll be the smallest it's ever been. And what the hell does this have to do with Lady Beast? Well... Nothing for the most part, but it has everything to do with Lady Beast's logo. Because for Reaper Metal Productions this month, the band, the, the release that's happening is Lady Beast. And when you are landed with a logo like the one that I showed you, well then, when you're an asshole like me, the first thing you got to say is, I love your band. I would love to work with you guys. Have you ever thought about a new logo? So I wanted to kind of walk you through that process, because here on Reaper Metal Productions, that's kind of one of the things, rather than be like, you know, we got a cool release, buy it now! It'd be cool to kind of have that experience. You know, back in the day, you used to get a CD that you could follow along with liner notes and whatever the hell, and, and you could pretty much still do that, but, you know, there was like fan clubs and things you could mail into, and, and it gave you an extra experience. Well, here's my attempt at an extra experience. I'm going to lead you to the possibly mundane uh, process of coming up with a logo. But hey, maybe you don't know, and when I did that uh, uh, CD design tutorial video, it had pretty good results. What are you talking about? Psh, there's that link. So, let's check this out then. So, we had this logo scheme, there's obviously three different ones, and there were things that we liked about it, but the weaponry, it was like, ah, a little bit too much. Or, I don't really remember, it was a little bit ago. But there's things about it, like that A, where it kind of has, like, teeth to it. And then, like, I started to see right here in this middle logo, eyes. Not so much in the A, but if you put those eyes and those teeth, like, oh, wow, there's, there's like, kind of a spider in there. Like... You know, and let's think outside of a beast. Like, everybody else is probably going to put, like, a, I don't know, well, like something hairy and, and whatnot. And I, and I guess a spider is, could very well be hairy, but you get where I'm going. Not so much, uh, what, is a, what is a spider? It's not an insect. It's the thing I can't think of off the top of my head. Arachnid. So, you know, it could be many things. And that's where my thought was open. It's like, oh, we're on a cool path. When you tweak and then you get a result like this... You're like, that's a cool result, and, and that is the logo that we landed with. But then you get more results that, you know, that artist is really thinking inside or outside the box or new ideas and give you more things that opens your creativity. And then you land with something like that, with that logo, and you're like, wow, that would be a great logo for the Lady Beast roller coaster that doesn't exist. But, you know, it opens up that mindset, and so... These scratches and stuff, it was like, oh, cool, like, I get where you're going with that, not to uh, knock the artist there, it was a noble attempt at something really cool, and, and it is cool, 
It just looks like a roller coaster. Um, and shit, Lady Beach, you know, being from Pittsburgh, Kennywood, you might as well be uh, listening up there. So anyway, you get there and you start to get ideas, and that's where it comes together for potentially another tutorial, I guess, of sorts, in designing the cover of this release. What do you do? The light bulb lit off again. You know, talking to Deb, the vocalist, who uh, has been on this channel before. If you haven't seen it, boom, there's the link. Check it out. She's awesome, and it's a good video. So anyway, we started thinking about what we could do, and oh, and hey, you know, well, maybe the band could have a mascot, but we don't entirely know yet. We kind of got to get this release going, and it'd be kind of cool that maybe if this is to be where we were, we got a, where we got a logo, a new logo now in this release for our old stuff. Maybe we don't reveal that character yet. And that's exactly what we did here on the cover that Mr. Mark Riddick contributed. Now, he didn't contribute the logo, but he did contribute this awesome skeleton here, uh, which was actually the first adaptation of this creature right here that will is obscured purposely because we didn't want, want to really reveal that yet, you know? It's too early, I guess. But that was his first attempt at that, and it was just so awesome that I was like, oh, well... We're going to use that for something, and that something became right there. Um, this is about when all these heads are put together, what we came up with. Placing a logo can be a real pain in the ass, especially when you've got two-word bands. I'm in a band with two words, and that can be, a, and that was where it's been the most pain in the ass. Um, because sometimes you need it to be on top of each other, sometimes you need it to be side by side, and sometimes none of those work, and you're like, fuck, why didn't you come up with a shorter name? But this, it was just worked and probably largely due to the fact that it's uh you know working on a new logo and then on some artwork at the same time and you know all those kind of came together but i came up with the idea since lady beast kind of embodies a lot of their local scene where they're from in pittsburgh why don't we put a color to this say what color kind of uh resembles the band a little bit and i don't think steelers was named in particular but it wasn't certainly it certainly wasn't thrown out and man, if the Steelers knew I was thinking in their direction, and if you go to their website, they'll give you the hex code. The hex code is, like, if you went and you want to try to find a code right here, um, you know, right here, you could see that there's a number. There's three, there's six digits, a hex code for that particular color. So that's, boom, exactly, without a doubt, Pittsburgh Steeler gold. Available now! What a great plug. Look at that all ties together. Started with obituary, talked about logos and bored you to death, and then it came all around that sell you something, right? But there it is, and it's an awesome double disc CD, and the release, official release date is Friday, so depending on when you're watching this video, maybe it's already out. But if you go to Reaper Metal Productions Bandcamp, boom, it's right there for the taking. Grab yourself a double CD, because that's how long it is. It's three releases, their first three releases, uh, Metal Immortal EP, Lady Beast 2, and then Lady Beast. It goes in descending order like that, um, which is another thing you kind of think about when you're doing these things. Uh, what order do you put it in? Hopefully you appreciate that and can find enjoyment out of this. But if not, hey, just don't watch this video. There's plenty more videos because that's what we do on this channel if you're new here. So all that YouTube jargon is now going to come into play if you want to get it a Lady Beast double CD. I have the individual albums, and I want that collection. It's got it's got the new logo. It's got the Mark Riddick exclusive artwork on front, back, and mid page, and then Reap Dog's awesome, cool uh, new layout. Well, then hey, this is right here for you. But otherwise, subscribe and do all that great stuff. And there's plenty of other videos like podcasts and nerdery of metal kind that I'm sure you can find, and all that'll be linked here. But if that doesn't suit you, that's fine. But if it does, well then, we'll talk to you next time.